Hello, everybody. This is Equestria Talk, and we're here with Mr. John Delancey for an interview today. And we, we want to th uh, thank you very much for joining us today, Mr. John Delancey. Thank you. My pleasure. And uh, was the uh, Pony documentary your I your idea, or did you have help from other people? Well, I mean, the Brony documentary was actually Mike Brockoff's idea, who was the executive producer of it. He came to my house um, for dinner and, uh, on the same day that um, I discovered that um, such a thing as bronies and... Uh, I was telling him about it, and he said, well, didn't we do a documentary? And at first I, I said no, but after a couple of weeks of, um, of persistence on his part, I said, I said yes. When did you begin? And then you here. Yeah, um, when did you begin voice acting? Voice acting? Oh. I, or I just, you know, acting? Well, acting, I was uh, 14. Oh, wow, wow. That's, that's impressive. That's a long time. Uh, Brony documentary. Alright. So, so uh, how long did the uh, Brony documentary take to make everything? Well, we started in May, and we released it a week ago, so I don't know how long that is. What is it, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So, so that's seven, eight months. Yeah, uh, that's actually not bad. That's, that's pretty quick. Yeah, for, for all the... That's very quick. I mean, uh, m most documentaries of this sort take um, three years. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, you guys... And the only documentary I've ever seen besides this one was The Cove. And uh, that one wasn't exactly... I mean, it's good, but I just couldn't watch it. All right. All right. Okay. Um, what, was, what was the first thing that you thought about bronies, like when you heard about them? Well, I mean, my first... I went through the same thing that the documentary goes through, and which is, uh, you know, I thought, well, there's got to be something really wrong with a 20-year-old guy who's watching a cartoon for ten, intended for 10-year-old for girls. Uh, what a... What a... Cutie mark from the sh sh show really uh, stands out to you, do you think? What? 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 Say that again? Uh, uh, what a... Cutie mark from the show. Do you think I s s stands out to you most? I, I'm just losing the first word. It, 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 what segment is that? What you're is that the word you're um, using? Segment. No, we're we're asking what pony has a cutie mark that stands out the most to you? Wow, well, I, I don't know. We just have a really lousy connection, so I'm just not getting it. But I think that what you're asking is what part that I like the most. Um, and the, the, so I'm going to answer, I'm going to pretend that's the question. The, the, uh, the, the, um, I like Daniel's story a great deal. I think it's very, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, 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 it's very interesting. I get very much attached to him. I, I, I like all of the stories. Um, Alex's story and Al and, and Lyle's and what have you, but, but, but Daniel's story, um, has something about it, which is, it's, um, I, I, I really think that he sort of traveled the, the furthest distance in, in the film of anybody. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, let's see. What, you know, what do you think was the hardest part about make, um, what is the hardest part about playing the role as Discord? Um, well, the, you know, that's, uh, 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 well, there is no really hardest part. I mean, it's, 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 it's sort of easy. I mean, that's why I'm a professional actor. It's, it's easy or easier. Uh, and, um, so it's, 
I don't think of it as being difficult at all. All right. Well, uh, let us be worried then. Uh, what is the most interesting part of playing Discord? Well, I think the part that most people enjoy the most, and and it's and it is fun to do, it has to do with just it being him being naughty. He's a sort of a <laughs> naughty guy. He's <laughs> yeah. a guy who likes causing chaos. Yeah, pretty much. Right, right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, what was the most uh, difficult part of making the Brony documentary? The most physical part? Uh, no, no, the most uh, difficult part. I'm like, sorry. Like the hardest part. Uh, most difficult part. Well, the most difficult part is is that after you, you know, you send all of these crews out, you know, to. New York and South Carolina and Maine and Israel and Germany and you know, blah, 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 uh, San Diego and, and Los Angeles, what have you. You then have to sit there and you have to watch all this stuff. And it, it's, it takes two or three weeks just to look at everything. <laughs> you know, yeah. eight hours a day just, just looking at it. And going, okay, well, we could use that. And, no, that's not, that doesn't, you know. You sort of, you, you, you have to, you, you go out to shoot what you think is the story. Then you shoot what is taking place. And then you come back and you take a look and you go, well, do we really have a story here? And what, what is it? And, you know, it's, it, you, 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 it, it's so much stuff uh, that I, I don't know how to describe it. It would be, let, let, let's just imagine, you know, you know, you come back and, and the garage now is filled from floor to ceiling and you can hardly step into the garage. And what you have to do is start pulling everything apart and going, okay, okay, you know, I've got a, I found a tire here. Now, do we have an axle? And, uh, you know, oh no, there's no axle, but we do have a, uh, you know, something else. We got some rope. Oh well, we could make a swing out of that. And you know, it's 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 very very um, free flow, and um, and sometimes very frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds really that. sounds really time consuming. Trying to find everything that fits together just perfectly would. Yeah. Right. Right. Wow. So, uh, so uh, what were your uh, th first th thoughts when Hasbro came to you and asked if you wanted to play a Discord in, in My Little Pony? Well, Hasbro didn't come to me. Um, um, you know, it doesn't work that way. Um, uh, you know, a, a person who I don't even know who it was called up my agent and said, we would like to hire John to do My Little Pony. And I didn't know what My Little Pony was. So uh, I said, well, why don't you send me the script? And I saw a little bit of the script, and I went, oh, this is well written. And... ...people there. And uh, and that was it. That, you know, that's that's the extent of my interaction, and um, and that would be at the very bottom of the chain. Uh, so and and usually one never hears from those people again. You know, you just you know everybody, everybody's very nice with each other, but it's it's just it's uh, you know an hour's worth of work on my part, maybe two hours, let's say, on my part the night before to kind of prep it and to understand what I'm doing, and then an hour or two in the, in the, in the, sound, in the sound booth, and, and then that's it. It's the end of the story. Never, never to be thought of again. <laughs> well, that's, um, did you already yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Our minds aren't exactly right right now. <laughs> um, um, 
If you could say something to the bronies right now, what would it be? Oh. Oh, I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't know. You know? <laughs> oh. It's just a question we got. Let's yeah. like you know asking if you could give so, them a shout out. Uh, I, 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 that I, I, I like what you're doing, and uh, if, if, if you then to help us. Uh, um, we need to be able to get this out to a larger, you know, to the to the general public is mostly what we need to do. Well, yeah, I know I've been seeing a lot of it over Twitter and YouTube, people giving the documentary sh shout outs and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a misconception and a and an understandable one, but it's still a misconception. And that is is that most people think that you know three hundred and twenty thousand dollars is is a fortune in terms of making a documentary. Well, that happens to be the number that most documentaries come in at. I mean, professional documentaries. That's just about the right number. Hmm. Oh, the other misconception is is that they say, well. Um, we've already, we the community have already paid for the documentary, so we should be able to download it for free. Well, no, it's actually the people who contributed to the documentary who have paid for the documentary, and they have gotten many things, not the least of which is the documentary. So the people who are just willy nilly downloading it um, are not in that in that group. And then the third thing, which is the most unfortunate about all of this is that to be taken seriously about being a brony, it's not about telling each other. It's about telling the world at large. Oui. And this documentary goes a long way. It won't be the, the last one, hopefully. But as the first one, the first major one, it goes a very long way in legitimizing being a brony. Um, uh, the problem is, is that it has to get onto the big major sites like the Netflix and the and the big distributed and what have you. And if they take a look at and and and, and believe me, they don't they don't they. They don't really care about whether you know there, there's goodness or not goodness attached to their decision. They care what numbers are. So if they look at the you know official site and say, oh, there are only four thousand people who purchased this, and then they look at the 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 you know, and then from there they can make determinations that there have been you know ten thousand. Now they'll go. Well, I don't know. You know, um, this is already out in the market. Uh, how are we going to how are we going to benefit from this? And that'll be the end of it. And that's really too bad because if we could have showed them, we could show them large sales that they that they then take over, they would be inclined to have it on, on the, in in you know in the Netflix world. Oh, uh, but if they but if they have a feeling that it's just Ubiq can be found ubiquitously everywhere. They're just going to go, well, you know, yeah, it's a good documentary. It's very interesting, guys, but um, it's, uh, we're not, you know, we're not in the business. We're, we're in business. We're not in, you know, in, in anything else. So. so that's sort of where we are right now, and, you know, we don't know how the community will, will, will react to that, but that's what the, what the, the realities are. Yeah. yeah. And I and I highly doubt that that this will be the last one. I'm sure a lot of people will make will make a lot more documentaries. All right. Uh, so far, you have the voice t story, the uh, the Raven. Uh, do you have any more that you're working on? No, I, I'm not. No. Okay. All right, but um, well, we're gonna have to wrap it up for that. Yeah, that was our last question. Uh, okay, well, nice talking to you, and good luck, and. Uh